Okay, we're starting to piece it all together. So we've looked at summarizing data in chapter two, and that's really just you know putting into frequencies more or less. With chapter three, we looked at coming up with what is the middle point of our data, and then also how much does it vary from that middle point. And now we're getting to that point where we can start making business decisions because we know we've already summarized our data, and now we're going to apply probability to different things to be able to make real decisions. Because really think about it. When you make a decision, whether you like to think of, uh, whether you know you're doing it or not, you are basing it on probability. Whether it be the way that you're going to get to work. I mean, I'm going to take, uh, or we all know that the probability of getting stuck in a traffic jam is a lot higher between 7 and 8 in the morning than it is at 6.30 in the morning if we're going to Nashville. So we can do things to make sure that we um, get places based on probability. I mean, we all do that. And so every decision we make, it's usually based on some type of probability. Why do you study? Because the probability goes up, uh, or the probability of success goes up, the more you study for a test, and hopefully that means your grade will go up. So you do things based on probability. So we've got to learn probability. We've got to learn the basic rules for probability. I would like to again stress that this is a uh, video to expose you to this. To really learn the how-to, you got to go into the homework manager, watch the guided examples and the solution videos, and really understand it that way. But this is going to just give you an overall. It's not going to cover everything in detail. It's only going to give you exposure. When we talk about probability, we are talking about the likelihood of something occurring. And it's always between 0 and 1, with 0 being no chance, 1 or 100% being uh, a definite, no-brainer, it's going to happen kind of thing. We all think of probability. I know all of you probably got up today, got on your iPhone or your uh, Android device, and looked up the weather, and you saw that the weather said it was there's a 30% chance of rain. What does a 30% chance mean? Well, it means basically out of three different days or three different times, there's a one one of those times it'll rain, right? About 30%. And so that's kind of where those kind of numbers go from. How do they come up with that information? Well, based on the characteristics of what's happening outside, you can base a probability. It's cloudy. There's moisture in the air. There's a chance of rain that way. It doesn't mean it's actually raining outside. What if there was a 100% probability of rain? Would you do something different than if there was a 0% chance of rain? I know I'm a person that loves to be outside. I like to ride my bike. I like to go for a run. And uh, I like to ride my bike to work. And today I wanted to come to campus and be able to do these videos, but I wanted to ride my bike got online and saw that there was an 80% chance of rain, and I decided, let's take the car instead. So we all do things based on probability. Again, the likelihood of something occurring. So again, at the zero uh, percent or probability, it's not very likely. 50% is it could or could not happen, and 100% or one being definitely likely to occur. We all know some things that are 50%. For example, flip of a coin. No matter what, a flip of a coin, if it's equal on both sides, will be 50% heads, 50% tails. So um, an example of um, it being just as likely as it is unlikely would be uh, the flipping of a coin. When we want to come up with a probability, we can uh, come up with an experiment, and whether that be flipping a coin however many times, that being our sample space, and then the outcome being our sample point. So I want to flip a coin, and I want to know how many times I'm going to get tails. Well, I'm, I flip it 10 different times, and lo and behold, 5 out of 10 times it comes up tails. 50% chance of it occurring based on that. So when we look at an experiment, again, toss a coin, the outcomes would be then heads or tails. If I inspect a part on the production line, it's either defective or not. Uh, a sales call either um, uh, can be a purchase or not be a purchase. And I want you to really think about that sales call one. 
the probability, if you look at that, if you just think of the fact that there's two possible outcomes, says that there's a 50% chance of the sales call being successful because it's one out of two, right? But we know better than that because if a uh, person makes a phone call, let's say they call 100 individuals, it's more likely to be around 10 or 5 people that are willing to purchase over the phone. And so the probability then is different based on history than it is just on the possible outcomes. So let's uh, take a look again at some of the different uh, basics. When we look at probability, we will in many cases, let's get that pen going here, make sure that it's a color that I like, there we go. We'll do it as a probability of the expected here, and it needs to be something between zero and one with uh, it going ranging from either zero to one or zero to 100%. When I say 0 or 1 or 0 to 100%, realize I'm talking about the same thing, where 0.5 is the same as 50%. Again, we can assign different probabilities, and as we get going, what we will always notice is when you take all different possible outcomes, they'll equal 1. If you are talking about flipping a coin, there's only two possible outcomes. No matter what it is, the probability when you add both those together, will be 1 or 100% of all possible outcomes. So um, how do you assign probability? Well, let's go back to that salesperson example. And when I talked about the salesperson example, if we base it on the classical method, which means it's only based on the outcomes, well, how many different outcomes can there be for sales? Well, sales... Uh, uh, tells us that you can either purchase something or not purchase something. So there's two possible outcomes. But we understand in business that it's not a good idea to base your decision on just outcomes. Because we know that when somebody calls you on the phone or when you go into a store, the probability of somebody purchasing is not 50%. It's based on past history. Past history would be the relative frequency method. And that looks at historical data and makes that decision. So if you had 100 uh, phone calls, then the probability of success is not going to be 50%. It might be 5%. It might be 7%, 10%. It's more likely to be something around that area. I'll tell you, I'll give you a nice little statistic I heard, uh, and it's why you are bombarded by salespeople when you walk into a furniture store. What percentage of individuals are ready to buy furniture the minute they walk into a furniture store. Now, if you base it on the classical method, it's one out of two because they're either going to or they're not, and that's 50%. But the truth is, based on statistics, based on some survey, based on some data, looking at historical data, they determined that three out of four people are ready to buy when they walk into a furniture store. So if you were to go into Ashley Furniture or Haverty's, they know that three out of four individuals are ready to buy. They just need that little bit of push. And so that's why the minute you walk into a furniture store, a salesperson is attached to you immediately because they know that you're there to buy. Or there's a 75% chance or three out of four chance that you want to buy. And so that's an example of where historical data helps us make a better informed decision than just looking at the classical method. And then lastly is just based on our judgment. And we look at things and we can make decisions. So um, we all do this. I mean, this is, this is how we run our lives is based on the subjective method in many cases because we don't have data. I don't have an iPhone sitting there with that percentage of 50% chance of rain today or 80% chance of rain. But I look outside and I see there's a lot of clouds and I hear thunder in the background. I'm pretty sure it's going to rain and I don't need uh, to take a uh, sample to figure that out. So in that case, the subjective method is more than fine and for making the right decision. So with that, these are the three different uh, approaches. And... Uh, if you want to take a look at some different examples, again, a rolling of a die is a good example of the classical method because 
1 has the same likelihood as 2, as 3, as 4, as 5, and as 6. 1 out of 6. No matter what you do, you're not going to change that unless the die is actually um, uh, heavier on one side or the other. But let's assume it's perfect and we roll a die. We know that there's just a likelihood of a 1 coming up as a 4. If you look at the relative frequency approach, let's just take a look at uh, this example where they're looking at uh, the number of car polishers it rents each day, and they're trying to come up with uh, the likelihood of a certain number. And you can look at the different data this way, come up with some different probabilities. So what's the probability of zero uh, polishers being rented? And you can see for uh, the number of days that that occurred, it was four. So it's a 10% chance. The probability of two being rented would be uh, 45%. And so you can see how it works with more of that approach. And then, of course, just the uh, subjective method. You know, you look at it. We all have a feeling that maybe the market's doing well, but we don't have any data to back that up. We're basing it on, you know, just maybe some other uh, subjective type of things. Maybe the way people talk about certain things all helps us make those decisions.